This build absolutely destroys the end game. <clears throat> this is the part of the intro where I would make some sort of weird, funny dad joke, but um, my OBS has crashed now three times trying to record this, and audio problems have kept happening. So I'm going to rush this a little bit and just pretend like I had an intro. Nice. All right, moving on. R3.0. Today we're talking about Hunter. I already did one video on Titan, basically Weatherman Storm Grenade Simulator. That's cool. Let's talk about Hunter. For Hunters, in the footage you're going to be watching today, is going to be solo slash farming Master Kaido with my team using R3.0, Hunter specifically. And just to be completely clear, this build just completely memes the endgame entirely. Raids, dungeons, master content at 1600, GMs, solo GMs, and even day one raids. I'm sure this would be absolutely fine to use, other than, you know, you're not running tether, because div nerfed, blah, 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 all that nonsense. Moving on. So, you're going to be seeing me just obliterate Master Kato here on screen, and then I'll go over what I'm using, going back and forth between the footage and, you know, the mods and stuff on screen so people can see. So here we go. We're going to start with Arc Strider, the subclass. Obviously, you want to have Gathering Storm for PvE because it's, I mean, it's just superior in every way. To Arc Strider, PvP, go for Arc Staff, sure, but why on God's Earth would you ever play that, right? So, abilities. You want Gambler's Dodge for this because it recharges your melee ability every time you do a melee, regardless if you get a kill or not. You will have your melee in your back pocket to get your charged melee back if you need it. Then we got any jump you want. I have triple jump. Some people like strafe. What the hell's wrong with you? I'm going with triple jump. For melee, you have combination blow. For those of you that are not familiar with it, a quick strike that temporarily increases your melee damage when defeating a target stacks up to three times. This is one of the key parts to this build. You want to constantly always build up to three stacks with your combination blow and combine it with other melee based abilities slash perks slash buffs to get nutty melee damage on your melees. Then we got grenades. I personally have pulse grenade. You don't really need to run pulse. You can run whichever one you want. I just don't really like Storm outside of using it on a Titan, so I prefer Pulse better. You could always just use like, like Flux if you have the insane accuracy of like a Giga Chad, but I go with Pulse. Aspects. we got Lethal Current and Flow State. Nothing really critical to explain here, just more Jolt melee stuff. And for Fragments, we have Spark of Resistance to resist more damage. Spark of Shock to do Jolts with our Grenade. Spark of Feedback, because you're going to be up and close and personal with basically every enemy, and eventually you are going to get punched. Then you punch back, and you do more damage. And then finally, Spark of Ions, defeating Jolted Target, causes an Ionic Trace, basically helping your ability regen spamming between your melees, your grenades, and your super. I'll go over guns and armor and mods in a second here. Just wanted to explain the basic combat loop of this. Essentially, you want to start off the fight by either picking off random red bar enemies such as Scions, Thrall, Dregs, etc. Basically ones that have a low threshold for health. Or if you want to go after a big boy, try to lower them by using a shotgun with your 1-2 punch and lowering them and then punching them. Speaking of which, 1-2 punch is a big part of this build. You always want to have 1-2 punch in the back of your pocket, especially when you have your X3 combination blow going up and having your maximum melee damage. So essentially you want to go dodge, use your shoddy, but not kill them, and then punch them to death. And this will take out any target that's not a boss. And this doesn't include champions that are even on GMs. You can two-shot champions very, very easily with this build in GMs. Even maybe one-shot if the circumstance is right. So what you're going to see me doing here is getting my stack as fast as possible. And then I will intentionally try to dodge right before hitting a shielded enemy or basically any enemy that's not a red bar. Therefore getting my dodge, then my shot, then my melee. So I'm combining my roll, my jolt and my melee damage all into one single punch to just knock out the target every single time. And this works with basically every bellhop in here, whether I'm solo or farming with my team and just jolting targets. Additionally, as you'll see on screen, I'm also going invis slash healing. This is due to Assassin's Cow, which I'll go over in a second here. But I just wanted to note that this is the basic loop, including healing and shielding, and you basically get away for free once you kill a target because of the invisibility. So let's go to the weapons and mods now. As I mentioned, a 1-2 punch shoddy. You don't need to run specifically like Wastelander or any particular shoddy for that matter. You could run basically any shoddy that has 1-2 punch on it, whether it's in the kinetic slot or the energy slot. doesn't really matter. So whichever slot you get a shoddy in, just in the opposite slot, you can run whatever 
other gun you want, whether it's double energy, double special, or you run like a standard, you know, pan cannon pulse, what have you. For the heavy slot, you really have two choices. So you can either go the meme route and tractor cannon all the enemies that are beefy, like a champion, to do even more damage, and then continue your one-two punch combo with X3 final blow and go bam into the kill. Or you can take the other route of just going for DPS. This is particularly for something like, as you're seeing on screen, Master Keitel, where you don't want to be tractoring her the entire time, especially if your other two teammates happen to have, you know, a div, tether, etc. So you want to have an option like Taipan or Cataclysmic, uh, Storm Chaser, Razor Gret, etc., etc. So that's the two options for Heavy, at least as far as I'm concerned. And let's go to the mods. First up, we have the before-mentioned Assassin's Cowl. Really, really good exotic. One of the best hunters have these days since 3.0 and got all the reworks. For those of you that don't know what Assassin's Cowl does, this can be used on basically anything. You know, Solar, Void, etc. It doesn't have to be on Arc specifically, but it does work really well with Arc. So, Powered Melee, Final Blows, Grant Invis, Restore a portion of your health and shields. Finishers and Final Blows against more powerful targets, so orange or yellow bars. Increase the duration of inv invisibility and the amount of health and shields restored. Basically, anything higher than a red bar, you get all your health back, shields, and you go invis. Then you just rinse repeat the cycle of tumble dodge, punch, get all my stuff back, go invis, rinse repeat. And then for mods on this helmet, I have hands on, gain super energy on melee hits. Basically, every time you get a kill, you're going to get a chunk of your super energy back just to get your gathering storm that much quicker. And trust me, it is very, very quick. Then, in the second slot, you can actually put in another hands-on here, but if you happen to be doing an activity that has unstopped champions, you could slot in Inferno Whip. It's not a big deal. That's just personal preference up to you. And then, in the last slot, we have a Well of Ions. Pick up an Arc Elemental Well, causes your next melee to do increased damage. So, just like you're stacking X3 Combination Blow, you use this as well to do even more damage on top of that using Elemental Wells. Moving on... For gloves, I ended up going with Impact Induction, causing damage with the melee attack, which is your grenade cooldown. Again, you're going to be doing a lot of melees, so you might as well get your grenade back and then use that jolt for as much as possible. Then we got Focusing Strike, Grant Class Ability Energy when you cause damage with a melee attack. Cycling more energy. Moving on, Battleful Wells. For those that don't know, this is a really, really sick mod, and you should look out for it if you don't have it from 8 to 1 daily. So, Elemental Wells made that cause you to spawn Elemental Wells can now stack, spawning additional wells each for each copy of this mod that you have on. So basically, if you have one Elemental Well mod on your armor anywhere, on any piece, and then you have Bountiful Wells, when you create a well from that, so let's say Melee Wellmaker, which I am running, then this will make it so you make two wells instead of one, just providing you more replenishment just faster and faster. Moving on to the chest piece. For the chest piece, the middle two, nothing crazy, thermal shock plating, and then concussive damper, or if you want to run the third elemental uh, part here, I think it's void, to just have reduced damage, because 40% reduction is not enough. <laughs> and then melee well maker here, as I mentioned before, basically you're just going to make elemental wells every single kill you get, literally every single kill, and it synergizes very, very well with Bountiful among all the other mods. So let's move on to boots. Nothing special here in the second slot, Shotgun Scav. I don't think I need to explain why I have Shotgun Scav. You want your one to punch ammo as much as possible. Then for the last slot, this is kind of up in the air. You could run any mod you want in this slot, really. For example, I have Explosive Wellmaker because it just synergizes well with, well, any type of explosion. For those of you that don't know, this actually works with anything that has a boom in the game or AoE damage. For example, Glacier Nades and Shattering with Stasis actually triggers with Explosive Wellmaker. Maybe some of you didn't know that. There you go. So this works kind of the same way with Jolting. It can make a well through that. So that's why I have that on. But you can slot this out and put something like Powerful Friends on if you want to get higher mobility on your build and you don't really feel like you need to run Explosive instead. That's totally player preference. Up to you. Finally, for class item, we got uh, Surge Detonator here, which you can just pretty much ignore because you're not going to need this in about a month. It's probably going to be gone. But if you're doing an activity with Orlo Champs, you could toss this on if you'd like. Then we have Double Bomber in the middle slots for getting your grenade back faster when you keep dodging over and over and over. You can slot this out for something like Utility Kickstart if you'd like for a Stasis class item, that's up to you. And then finally we have Well of Life, one of the most underrated well mods in the game. Picking up a Solar Elemental Well grants increased regeneration for a short period of time. So this works really well with Explosive Wellmaker because you're going to be making a Solar Elemental Well from that. 
then you pick this up and you get faster regen on, well, everything. So that's it in terms of, you know, fragments, aspects, armor, mods, guns, etc. And the build flows really, really well. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you could use this basically literally anywhere and be totally fine as long as you play smart. Have the right weapons on in your heavy slot and you'll be good to go. As you're going to be seeing on the footage in the video, we can easily kill Keitel in two bells even when I just mess around with shotgun ammo in these runs farming out armor or I just slap on a Taipan, do my melee stuff in the first room and when we get teleported for DPS and the bell hops have been dealt with, I'll just use a gun on the actual boss, in this case, in Keitel. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this build. I hope you have fun. I will leave a dim link for this build as well that I'll post in the pinned comment below since... I don't know, descriptions are really weird on YouTube these days. Some people might not see that. And that's it. One final note for armor distribution in terms of points, in case people are curious. Really all you need is 100 resilience because 40% damage reduction. It's really stupid. There's no reason not to have it. Just go at 100 no matter what. That's pretty much it. If you want to have high mobility just to get dodges back faster, that's totally cool. Player preference, you can stack to 100 or you can stack to like 50. Doesn't make a giant difference but it might in like something like a solo attempt at a GM other than that you don't need a high amount of recov because you're gonna be just healing non-stop with your combos with your x3 final blows so you don't need to really worry about stack and recov and then for the bottom stats really it's between discipline and intellect I think as long as you're doing the build properly you don't really need intellect because you're gonna get all your energy from hands-on just doing melees over and over and then for discipline if you're doing the jolt version of this build then you can stack 100 discipline just to get your grenade back even faster than you already get it with all the mods on throw it around jewel targets etc etc so that's it for points enjoy the footage and uh just so you guys know i will do a warlock arc 3.0 build as well even though uh, it's clear that warlocks are clearly the most uh hmm, how should i put this whelmed of the arc 3.0 builds coming out to this season so Anyway, like, share, subscribe if you did enjoy the video. It does help the channel. Also, stream daily on Twitch. Link in the description below for that. I'll catch you guys in the next video.